Welcome to Dave's Daily Crypto Take. Today is Monday, January 24th, 2022. Let's take a look at today's charts. At number one, we got BTC at $35,315, one cent, down 0.24%. Ethereum at number two, $2,450, two cents, down 0.53%. Tether at number three, one dollar. Number four, BNB, number four, BNB, $370, 23 cents, down 1.42%. USD coin number five, 99 cents. Cardano number six, one dollar and six cents, down 4.06 percent. XRP at number seven, 60 cents, down 0.37 percent. Solana at number eight, 89 dollars and 80 cents, down 7.69 percent. Terra at number nine, 64 dollars and 85 cents, down 4.18 percent. And last but not least, number 10, Dogecoin at 13 cents, down 0.79 percent. Let's take a look at the crypto and fear greed index. Extreme fear can be a sign that investors are too worried. That could be a buying opportunity. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for correction. So what we got today is extreme fear at 13. Yesterday was extreme fear at 11. Last week is extreme fear at 22. And last month was fear at 39. Let's take a look at our five articles for today. Article number one is Russian tech and political executives denounce crypto ban proposal. Article two, Elon Musk's three-word tweet sums up what everyone is already thinking about Web3. Article number three, Chinese investors Ryan Selkies seem to agree it's best to buy Bitcoin at this price. Article number four, crypto crash, Bitcoin losses nearly half its value and extends losses as market fails to rally. And last but not least, article number five, the main topic is Biden administration to release executive order on crypto as early as February report. So before we get into the articles, just want to say thank you so much to all my supporters. Catch me on any podcast realm, whether it's Google, Spotify, or uh, Apple Music. And if you're on uh, YouTube space, just click like, share, and subscribe. It does help me out greatly. So let's get into it, guys. Article number one is... Russian tech and political executives, Telegram denounced crypto ban proposal. CEO Pavel Durov wrote that the proposed ban on crypto would destroy a number of sectors of the high tech economy in a recent post in his messaging platform. Russian recent uh, ban on crypto has drawn criticism from a number of big names, including Alexei Navalny's chief of staff, Lena Volkov, and Telegram founder, Pavel Durov. On January 20th, Russia's central bank published a report proposing a blanket ban on domestic crypto trading and mining. The report stated that the risks of crypto are much higher for emerging markets, including Russia. However, it appears that the proposed ban isn't universally accepted in the former Soviet Union. A January 22nd post by the Telegram founder, Pavel Durov, stated that the proposed ban on crypto would destroy a number of sectors of the high-tech economy, he added. Such a ban will inevitably slow down the development of blockchain technologies in general. These technologies improve the efficiency and safety of many human activities from finance to the arts. While Durov conceded that the desire to regulate and circulation of cryptocurrencies is natural on the part of any financial authority, he concluded that such a ban is unlikely to stop unscrupulous players, but it will put an end to legal Russian projects in this area. Lenoid uh, Volkov, banning crypto is impossible. Meanwhile, in a Telegram post on January 20th, Volkov, who is the chief of staff for Alexei Navalny, wrote that the ban would be like calling a spade a spade. Navalny is an opposition leader in Russia and founder of the anti-corruption foundation, FBK. In August 2020, he was poisoned with a nerve agent, Novichok. After recovering in Germany, he returned to Russia in January 2021 where he was arrested and has remained in prison since. In his announcement, Volkov referenced a January 20th report by Bloomberg. It claimed that the Russia's Federal Security Service, FSB, was instrumental in advancing the ban because crypto can be used to finance non-systemic uh, opposition and extremist organizations. He went on to add that he was sure that Bloomberg version, in this case, is 100% close to reality but nothing will happen because Russians are more likely to use crypto to buy drugs rather than donate it to the Moscow-based nonprofit FBK. He quotes, technically banning cryptocurrency is the same as banning person-to-person transfers. Uh, 
It's impossible. Yes, they can make it very difficult to deposit funds on crypto exchanges, which means that intermediary services will simply appear that will do this through foreign jurisdictions. Yes, transaction costs will rise. Well, that's all, I guess. Well, what do you guys think about this article? Russian tech and political executives denounce crypto ban proposal. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. Article number two is... Elon Musk's three-word tweet sums up what everyone is already thinking about Web3. NFTs are getting a lot of attention, maybe too much attention. On Thursday, Twitter announced that people who pay for Twitter Blue, a $3 per month subscription, would be able to change their profile picture to a non-fungible token. Doing so would change the shape of your photo from a circle to a hexagon to identify that you had in fact linked an NFT wallet and didn't just upload some random pixelated photo of a monkey. In response, Elon Musk, who is never shy about what, he say, what about saying what he's thinking about, tweeted three words that I think sum up what almost everyone is already thinking about Web 3.0. This is annoying. He is not wrong. If you spend any amount of time online, you probably fall into one of these groups. The first are people who think that NFTs, cryptocurrency, and Web 3 are the promised utopian future of the internet. The second are people who think the entire thing is, as Musk said, an annoying distraction. The third are people who have no idea what any of those words mean. Oh, to be so lucky as to be in group three. <laughs> to be fair, Musk didn't dismiss Twitter's new feature. He followed it up with a more precise critique. Twitter is spending engineering resources on this BS, while crypto scammers are throwing a spam bot block party in every thread. He's referring to the fact that almost every tweet from an account account with more than, say, 10,000 followers, eventually ends up with a spam bot replying, promising Bitcoin riches. It is to be sure annoying. The point Musk is making is that instead of making their products better, companies are spending resources, time, and energy chasing the shiny new thing. Sure, some of them should argue that the shiny new thing, in this case, the blockchain and all things crypto, is better. That thing might be true in some circumstances. I think there's also a reasonable agreement that someone should be thinking about what comes next. Someone should be building a better version of the internet since it's the thing we all depend on for, well, pretty much everything we do. The problem is that better for now mostly means a way to bake a quick buck as people pump insane amounts of money into things like Bitcoin and NFTs. The value of either isn't based on the actual tangible thing, just type. For example, ask someone what it means to own an NFT. To be fair, most people won't know what you're talking about. Even if they've heard of an NFT, they probably have no idea what it means and they simply dismiss it as an important to their life. They would be correct. Even those who do understand NFTs can actually tell you what they own. If you change your profile picture on Twitter to an NFT monkey, you don't actually own the image of the monkey. You own a token that represents the image of the monkey. You basically paid for the right to say, I paid for something, even though I'm not sure what it is. Evangelists argue that promise of Web 3.0 is that people will have the option to own the internet. What does that mean? What will you own? Mostly, it means you'll own an intangible thing that has no actual utility or value in hopes that someone else will come along later and pay you more money for the thing that still has no utility or value. They are basically collecting beanie babies, which didn't become valuable because they had more intrinsic value than, say, baseball cards or stamps. They were valuable because they were the hot trend at the time, and people who were willing to pay $1,000 for a rare stuffed toy were counting on the idea that at some point, someone else would be willing to pay more. At least beanie babies were a real thing. At a minimum, you could set them on fire and use them for heat when you realize you've blown all of your money on something worthless and have nothing left to pay your utility bill. The reason Musk's tweet is a big deal is that he highlights the real problem with everything Web3. And yes, I realize that while Web3 encompasses blockchain technology, including NFTs and Bitcoin, they aren't exactly the same. Musk is an avowed fan of cryptocurrency, but not of Web3 generally. That problem is that a bunch of very smart people with a lot of money are chasing after a shiny new thing instead of making the thing they already sold to people better. If you build a platform like Twitter, for example, it would be nice if you can make it the best platform you can. Twitter is a great for a lot of things, but it's a terrible thing when it comes to things like sending direct messages, managing bookmark tweets, or editing tweets. Instead of fixing those things, it is investing resources in things that most users don't care about and that doesn't make the experience better. Of course, Twitter has a vested interest in getting people to connect their NFT wallets. Twitter wants to be a player in what it sees as the next big thing. 
The problem is it isn't making Twitter better for anyone who uses it today. That is, as Musk points out, annoying. So there you guys have it. What do you think about this article? Elon Musk's three-word tweet sums up what everyone is already thinking about Web3. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with Elon Musk or do you think he's just being kind of cheesy? Article number three, Chinese investors. Ryan Selkies seem to agree it's best to buy Bitcoin at this price. As Bitcoin dove into a pool of red yet again, taking many investor sentiments with it, El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukele, happily announced that he hadn't missed the dip after all. On the contrary, the head of state reported that El Salvador had bought another 410 Bitcoin for $15 million. However, is this truly the best time to buy the dip? According to journalist Colin Wu's survey of Chinese investors, a significant majority planned to buy Bitcoin over Ethereum during the dip. According to the Buy the Dip survey, conducted by the Chinese community on January 22nd, 61% chose to buy Bitcoin, only 22% chose to buy Ethereum, and 35% said that if Bitcoin fell below 30000 they would buy the bottom. But what was more telling is that out of 3,808 participants, 1,364 people said they would buy the dip if Bitcoin fell below $30,000. Meanwhile, 1,001 people had plans to buy if Bitcoin fell below $25,000. Though admittedly a very small sample size to work with, it shows that many investors are expecting the dip to go even lower. For his part, Masari founder Rahim Selkis announced that when he thought was a good time to buy Bitcoin, according to the researcher, this would be the, the market value to realize value ratio is less than one. What's more, Selkis argued that this would put Bitcoin's price at around $28,000 under the present circumstances. So in a sense, Selkis and most of the Chinese investors who took part in Wu's survey appear to be on the same page. Going, going, gone. Exchange flow balance for Bitcoin can offer a better snapshot of what took place. Between 20 January and 21 January 2022, there was an uptick in exchange inflows, suggesting that people were selling their assets. However, this was later followed by outflows. At press time, the exchange flow balance was 3,147.60 BTC. Showing mild inflows again, it's worth noting, however, that recent outflows came nowhere near the level seen around 11th of January 2022. This is a sign that investors are staying cautious. I'm calling it. All said and done, sentiment data has previously showed that investors called to buy the dip a long way before the lowest price point. Now, the metrics seem to suggest that the investors are getting wiser. Despite the levels of extreme fear in the market, not many are acting in greed. It can be argued that Chinese investors are waiting for lower prices before entering. Meanwhile, Binance-owned Wagseer X's CEO, Nishal Shetty, also claimed that Indian investors are opting for a wait-and-watch approach in this round. At press time, the king coin was trading at $35,487.57. There, there you guys have it. This article is Chinese investors. Ryan Selkis seem to agree it's best to buy Bitcoin at this price. Comment down below and let me know what price you think you should enter and which price you should buy the dip. All right. Before we move on to round two, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone that's been supporting me so far. I've been looking at the analytics and I see people in Asia. Thank you so much for the people in Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, also in Taiwan and Singapore. Thank you so much for all your continued support. And again, catch me on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and on the YouTube space, like, share, and subscribe. All right, let's keep on going, guys. Article number four, crypto crash. Bitcoin losses nearly half its value and extends losses as market fails to rally. Bitcoin continued to plunge on Saturday following Friday cryptocurrency market crash dropping 5.6% to sit below the $35,000 threshold for the first time since August. The world's biggest and best-known cryptocurrency slipped to $34,488.94 at 7.10 p.m. on Saturday, losing $1,878.27 from its previous close. Cryptocurrencies across the board continued to slide in value with indexes a sea of red still on Sunday. The price of Bitcoin was, however, up 1.8% from the year's low of $34,000. It's also plummeted over 40% since its historic high in November when its value reached $68,992.
At midday on Sunday, it was still down over 17% week on week, but had recovered 1% to $35,678.42, according to coinmarketgap.com. Either the coin linked to the Ethereum blockchain network also dropped 8.4% to $2,352 on Saturday, losing $189 from its previous close. At 12 p.m. on Sunday, it had rallied around 2% to $2,491, but was still down 25% week on week. The total market cap over 11% on Friday to $1.9 trillion, down from an all-time high of $3.1 trillion in November, according to data from CoinGecko. So question, what happened this week to cause a crypto crash? The losses across the crypto market mirrored similar losses in the traditional stock market, with the NASDAQ 100 shedding around 15% on Friday as well. It was the worst week for the tech-heavy NASDAQ since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, with over $60 billion in losses. In particular, the prospect of a rate hike by the U.S. Federal Reserve is pushing investors away from riskier assets, including cryptocurrency. In addition, regulators are increasingly concerned about the place of cryptocurrencies in the economy, with concerns that there will be further crackdown on digital currency. A Spanish market regulator strongly regulated advertising for trading platforms this week, and similar measures are being studied elsewhere in Europe, particularly in the UK. Elsewhere, the Russian central bank on Thursday proposed a ban on mining and use of cryptocurrencies in the country, arguing it posed a threat to Russia's financial stability and monetary policy sovereignty. So there you guys have it. Crypto crash. Bitcoin losses nearly half its value and extends its losses as market fails to rally. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think about that. All right. Last but not least, the main topic today is... Biden administration to release executive order on crypto as early as February report. The directive will ask federal agencies to determine the risks and opportunities posed by the digital assets. The White House is readying an executive order for release as early as next month that will outline a comprehensive government strategy on cryptocurrencies and ask federal agencies to determine their risks and opportunities. Bloomberg reported on Friday, citing unnamed sources. Many points in here, four points. Number one point, the directive would place the White House in a central role overseeing efforts to set policies and regulate digital assets, Bloomberg reported. Two, federal agencies have already been studying or providing regulatory guidance around the digital asset sector for years. Three, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, OCC, SEC, and CFTC have issued guidance letters, informal statements, and public rulemaking efforts to redirect how different aspects of the crypto industry should comply with federal law. But these efforts have not been coordinated in a single document or by one agency. Four, Biden administration senior officials have met multiple times to discuss the directive, which will be presented to the president in the next few weeks, according to Bloomberg. So, there you guys have it, Biden administration to release executive order on crypto as early as February report. Comment down below and let me know what you think. Do you think the Biden administration is a good thing for crypto or do you think it's a bad thing? People say regulation for crypto is a good thing, but some say no. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. All right, let's take a look at the prices one last time before we head out. At number one, we got BTC at $35,318. Ethereum at uh, number two, $2,450. Tether, $1. BNB, $370. USD coin, $0.99. Cents. Cardano, $1.07. XRP, $0.61. Cents. Solana, $89. Terra at $65. And last but not least, Dogecoin at 13 cents. So there you guys have it. Thank you so much for making this far into the Dave's Daily Crypto Take podcast and YouTube video. Again, please catch me on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcast. Please share this link with your friends and family that want unbiased news about crypto. News that are for or against crypto will always be in my place. And I will never give you financial advice, just opinion. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great crypto day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.